Good afternoon, members. Um, we'll just do the uh, re dear member of the Environment and Regeneration Committee. You're hereby summoned to attend the monthly meeting of the Environment and Regeneration Committee, which will be held hybrid meeting to be conducted remotely via Webex and also physically in the chamber in the Guildhall on Wednesday, the 18th of January, 2023, at 4 p.m. And I'll hand over to Karen to do the attendance. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Alderman Morris Devaney. Here, Karen. Thank you. Alderman Derry Cossey is in the chamber. Yeah. Alderman Keith Kerrigan in the chamber. Alderman Nairi McMorris. Here, Karen. Thank you. Councillor John Boyle. Here. Thank you. Councillor Alex Duffy. Councillor Stephen Edwards. Online. He's online. Okay. Councillor Rachel Ferguson. Here, Karen. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dan Kelly. Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, Councillor Emma McGinley. Okay. Um, Councillor Rue McHugh. Uh, Councillor Declan Norris. Here, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mavel Neil. And uh, Councillor Martin Riley. Here, Karen. Thank you. Okay, Chair. Thank you, Karen. And we'll note and I other members' attendance. Uh, member will do the broadcast statement. That's item three. And uh, I would like to remind everyone present at this meeting in the chamber uh, or in attendance remotely that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeated viewing. This broadcast may be terminated or suspended in accordance with our protocol. Due to your attendance at this meeting, you are consenting to be informed and to the use and storage of those images for broadcasting or training purposes and for the purpose of keeping historical records and making those records available to the public. Uh, members and approved speakers are reminded to only have their mics and cameras on while speaking at the meeting and to use the chat facility to highlight a request to speak. A copy of the Council Privacy Notice may be found on the Council website www.derrystheband.com. Uh, members, item four is declaration of members' interest. And uh, if we, I don't think we have anything at present, so if you want to raise it and due course when the items are brought up, members. So we will move on then, members, to um, number five, which is chairperson's business. I have two items which have been raised with myself. And uh, the first item here I will be Alderman uh, Derek Hussey in regard to Newton Stewart. Derek. Uh, thank you, Chair. And as you know yourself, I've engaged with yourself and indeed the officer responsible. So perhaps rather than me, I, I believe that uh, a meeting tonight has been cancelled uh, because of the weather uh, and other arrangements are being put in place. Perhaps we could hear what those arrangements are. Thank you, Chair. Um, and through you, I'll bring Tony Monathan into that. We are really disappointed, Chair, that um, we've had to postpone the meeting tonight. Um, and uh, Tony will give us a, an update on the arrangements that we're considering for uh, recommencing that. Thank you, Karen, and thank you, Chair. Uh, to Alderman uh, Hussey, uh, just to advise it regrettably due to the weather, and as has been noted, the um, the uh, workshop this evening has been postponed. It's our intention now to uh, to look at uh, rescheduling that within the next two to three weeks. Um, and the intention, the plan would be that we hold um, two sessions on the one day, uh, one a daytime session um, and the other an evening. And we're currently working to identify venues that are as accessible uh, to all members of the community that can access either the venues, either whether it be the daytime event or the evening event uh, and we hope to have a date uh, released as quickly as possible and perhaps by early next week uh, so we can give people sufficient notice to attend. Thank you. Uh, thank you Chair and thank you Tony uh, and Karen. Uh, I, I appreciate uh, what I've heard and, and I'm sure that there are folk in Newton Stewart who will welcome uh, a session within the town itself because it's the town that we're talking about and it's important that people are able to, uh, able to 
access the venue uh, and participate in any consultation on the matter. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Alderman Hutsey. And uh, yes, we have we have spoken that at length between ourselves and, and Tony, so I'm glad that it's, we're getting it sorted out. Um, we're also noting noting attendance of, of just Councillor McHugh, Councillor McGinley, and Councillor O'Neill online. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Councillor Councillor Duffy, sorry, yeah. Councillor Duffy, sorry, I neglected to welcome Councillor Duffy thank, uh, for your attendance. Like this is your first committee meeting, maybe it is, maybe it's not. It is. Uh, you're very welcome to, to the meeting, Councillor Duffy. Um, members, right. Next, my next, sorry, the next uh, chairperson's business I have in regards to the adverse weather, in regards to grip provision and DFI, and uh, we have Alderman Devaney as the first recorded speaker in this, Morris. Thank you, Chair, for uh, allowing me in. As you quite rightly said, um, it's raising the concerns um, on the difficulties on the road and the recent snowfall. Uh, and look, I'm long enough in council to know I know that there are roads that, that are gritted um, during the uh, when in a difficult time of weather, especially in snow. Uh, you know, residents have been complaining to me about main roads, why the snow ploughs haven't been out, and some of them have this uh, notion that the, 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 there hasn't been gritting done. But I've listened to DFA uh, um, on media um, yesterday, um, supporting the work that they, they have done. But, Chair, there has to be concerns uh, and around um, those areas, you know, the replenishment of salt, stroke, grit, or whatever it may be, because, you know, across the council area, from one length to the other with the snow, I'm hearing that those boxes and piles um, have not been replenished. And some of them even weren't even replenished um, for the last time we had the adverse frost for a, a number of days. Um, people are telling me that, that it wasn't replenished then and still isn't replenished now. And I do know, look, and I'm sure everybody's inbox as an elected member, whether you're a, a councillor, alderman or an MLA, your inbox is full uh, in relation to certain areas. Um, you know, in around the uh, in around the replenishment chair, I, I would like to propose that we write to DFA, um, calling on them uh, to replenish the the, the salt uh, and grit piles immediately. Because as I say, there are areas had no salt the last time with frost, uh, or no salt and grit this time. That uh, is what I would propose, chair, and it's very very simple to to get that piece of work done. Um, the other thing, Chair, just I want to raise uh, is in around the snow. Uh, we, when snow does fall, it is a time of fun for many, many people um, out sledging, sleighing about and snowballing. But there have been quite a, quite a number of incidents and I even heard on the radio today at lunchtime um, a, a driver on and she had a, her mother was on over 80 years of age and they had their window broken. Now, I do know there have been a number of incidents where snowballing incidents have taken place um, at passing vehicles on the main road and other roads as well. And I would just say, Chair, look, um, we need to call out to the parents uh, and ask them to find out where their children are because snowballing is fun, but it's dangerous when cars are being attacked, uh, windows are being broken and damaged to cars. So just want to call that out. But Chair, I, I do believe the issue in a Round the gritting as an, uh, an issue that needs to be resolved. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. Are we content with that? Yeah. Um, and just on, on that way, we're content with your proposal. It doesn't have to put it on. Do you want to speak? Through you, Chair, members, happy to contact the Divisional Roads Manager um, following the meeting today in relation to that particular issue. If members are happy, we do. Thank you, Karen. I have a number of speakers in this. To be fair, the first one I have on here is Councillor O'Neill and then Alderman Hussey after that. Maeve? Um, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, it was just, uh, again, to uh, echo the uh, previous speaker's comments, <coughs> um, just in terms of the response. I know that the, the uh, DFI uh, roads workers you know, have been working to full capacity in terms of the response of this. But I think the, the key issue for them is uh, the funding and the resource that's gone into uh, the winter response for DFA. And I know, um, you know, that has, has been spoken about, you know, by, um, by some MLAs um, who, who uh, their party has had a uh, uh, ministerialship over DFA and, you know, I think it's an example of how we're 
how cuts to public services are impacting um, everyday life. Like there needs to be a whole lot more resource uh, going into grip boxes and there needs to be more grip boxes in local communities. You know, there needs to be snow plows. It was good to see today the uh, the roads were a lot safer. But I know that yesterday um, there was many workers who, uh, you know, had to make it onto work, who really risked their lives uh, in that journey and, and trying to go to work because the roads were so, so dangerous. Um, and I think it's a credit to uh, those frontline workers who, you know, work, um, whether it's for a council, whether it's for the health and social care service, and particularly for domiciliary care workers who, um, you know, who know that there's people's lives and, and well-being depend on them actually accessing their home. And whenever they're they're risking their, you know, their safety, um, uh, using their vehicle to actually access people's homes to deliver care, um, you know, I think we need to really look at, at what we're doing as a society because the thing is, other countries can cope with snowfall, uh, but for some reason we can't. Um, and, you know, I hope that the FA will reflect on these adverse weather incidences because they're going to become more common uh, and there does need to be a lot more resource uh, from central government um, and, to, and to these responses um, rather than more cuts. Um, thank you. To you, Councillor O'Neill, and I do note that in the chat box that Councillor McGinley has seconded Alderman Devenny's proposal. But uh, Mark Alderman Hussey is next speaker. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you to Alderman Devenny for raising the issue, and yourself and myself, and I would say every councillor in the chamber has had the, the emails, the telephone calls, etc. Uh, I think a, an issue that concerns me this time. Uh, is the speed of response when the situation arose. And perhaps it goes back to Councillor O'Neill's scenario uh, with regard to resources that Western Division have available to them. And this has been questioned before, uh, and particularly with regard to road gritting, uh, when you consider the vast rural nature of our council area and the Western area, in, 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 in particular, uh, the, the, the situation can be exacerbated as to when the gritter can get to a particular point. So those issues, I hope, uh, can be made clear uh, to road service. Uh, I know uh, we have no responsibility in road service. Uh, the, the only weapon we have is to alert them to the concerns that we as elected representatives are receiving. And, and that's what we're doing at this stage. Um, perhaps in that letter, too, I could have clarity. Uh, I, I know the criteria, but clarity as to getting a road gritted. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you're aware of it, Chair, in our own area. And fair play, well done to the uh, member of the public who did contact road service and got a particular road gritted, officially gritted. I know for a fact that does not meet the criteria that we're often quoted here in the chamber. And I know that councillors in this chamber have said, you know, brought to the attention of road service particular roads that should be granted. The Drumlega Road is one that immediately comes to mind in my own area. And I'm sure every single councillor can highlight ones in their own area. But what was the criteria that allowed a particular section of a road to be gridded that didn't meet the criteria. And we hear constantly elected representatives throughout our district council area requesting gridding of roads in the interest of road safety, in the interest of health and well-being of the citizens throughout our area. I would like that clarified, but I do not take away from the good work done by the particular individual who contacted road service and got a particular road in our area credit. Well done to that person. Let's see more of it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hussey. Uh, next on my list is Councillor Edwards. Stephen. Yes, thank you very much. And I echo what the previous speakers have, have said and what Alderman Hussey said there. And Chair, for me, there, there is a big issue in, in the rural roads and some of our rural roads are, are very busy and as Alderman Hussey and, and Alderman leg as one road but uh chair i was contacted especially yesterday by a number of cares um and i think it's hugely important that you know they're trying to get 
um, to the patients to, to look after them. They can't get there. Um, one care contacted me. Her car got stuck in a, in a development um, and she had to walk. She actually got out and walked miles um, to her next patient. That She didn't want to leave them unseen. And she got a taxi home and was out a, a lot of money. So those sort of, you know, human stories, Chair, really, really, really resonate with me. And it does bring into question the way their issues are in grit. Also, one of her rural roads, Chair, there was a delivery driver came the whole way from Cork. Um, to, to outside say um, he got the delivery lorry stuck and he had to stay overnight in the, in the person's home that he was delivering the furniture to. Um, so them sort of things, Chair, and, and I know that DFA in the past, like in their rural roads in the past, they have left grip piles at the side of rural roads, but I've put in requests, Chair, um, in, in the last freeze and especially in the last few days, and they don't seem to be happening. So it will be good to get clarity, and I've raised it as well, and colleagues have raised it, it would be good to get um, clarity um, on that, Chair. Um, I agree that there is a need for, for more um, resources. I, I think, Chair, that the roads are the, the issues now, but there seems to be a bit of a thaw on, um, and when that thaws, there's extra water there, it's going to turn the ice overnight, it's going to freeze, and it's going to freeze tomorrow, um, and there's going to be a lot of people trapped in, in their uh, homes and their developments, uh, and that turns to, to grip boxes and getting salt boxes topped up that it needs to happen. It's very, very, very important. Um, and <clears throat> had many requests and I suppose like others to get grip boxes. Um, there's area developments that are uh, ineligible. And in fairness to DFA, some some have, they, they've reversed grit lorries and the developments and, and, and spread grit into them that don't have salt boxes. They've, they've done that, I've requested that and they've done that in certain occasions and I do appreciate that they, they are doing their best under extreme pressures. And Chair, just the last point, I do agree with, um, I think it was Alderman Devaney around the snowball, and it's uh, especially in Newton Shirt, it's been raised with myself, and you know, we all were young at one time, we're all through snowballs, but uh, throwing snowballs at, at traffic is, is definitely unacceptable, and I just want to echo his comments on that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Edwards, for your comments. Uh, Councillor McGinley, you seconded uh, Alderman Devaney's proposal. Do you wish to pass comment on it? Emma? Uh, Gormega, Chair, I hadn't planned it, but um, I think it's just to sort of reflect on, on comments that others have made. We understand that the Western Division are working at capacity, um, but it doesn't take away from, you know, the human stories that the councillor Edwards had referred to there, anyone here in Craigan. Um, I've had a number of issues where in quite a hilly area, so people are literally stuck in their house that they don't want to end up being sliding down the hill. Um, and the requests to get um, salt bins refilled, even since December after the last one, don't seem to have happened. Now, I don't know if it's a supply issue, um, but I'm sure that if we're going to write to DFI and raise the queries, um, as has been proposed by um, Alderman Devaney, that, that they may be able to answer that. Um, but I think it's just important that it's raised at these meetings and that we're, I know that as councillors, we're doing all we can, um, even outside of the Remit Council, um, but that statutory bodies are doing their job as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGinley. And, and uh, sorry, Councillor McMorris, you wish to come in, Mary? Sorry about that there. I was having a wee bit of technical issues there. Um, I agree with all the previous speakers, um, Chair, but I'd just like to highlight just one other um, incident that was, that's been happening due to the, the snow. Um, this last few nights, um, I have been on the interface of Irish Eight on Top of the Hill, um, where there has been interface violence, starting off with houses being attacked with snowballs, but it has escalated into um, as I say, inter interface violence, and um, it it has been um, a long few nights uh, with the snow, and um, I'd just like to say maybe we could make a proposal to speak to um, the PSNI in regarding to um, to you know put on extra resources and times off the the snow so that they would have extra resources in the highlight areas of um, interfaces and also communities where there is snowballing that's attacking the, the cars so and maybe i'd like to put that proposal forward just to speak to the a letter uh sent to the psni as well thank you uh, councillor mcmorris uh do you want to come on? three three you share members um the community our community safety uh manager um 
is a base within our health and communities department. If members would be happy, um, I could contact him to ask him to make direct contact with PSNI and, and raise that particular issue um, in relation to this particular area and um, ask that that's followed up if members are happy with that. Uh, are, you, are you content with that response, Councillor or Alderman McMorris? I am, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, members, just as I say, most issues have been touched in regards to adverse weather um, and they have been touched by the, the members who spoke in regards to grip piles which were requested to be replenished after the last cold spell and they still haven't been. Uh, I mean, I spoke to men there today who, who have paid to get roads ploughed themselves uh, because they have mill lorries or mop tankers to tank it in. And uh, again, that will be an issue as well as uh, Councillor Edwards has raised on. There's a bit of a thaw on there. And again, with another weather warning sent through email to us about ice then from was it 12 o'clock today to 12 o'clock tomorrow. So there's a potential end of, of again the roads. and. Even with that, I mean, we know the, the DFI department have constantly put the issue of lack of resources and lack of staff. You know, when you're looking to try and get potholes marked or looked at, and, and, and so it is it is a difficult one. Uh, but again, we'll, we'll push this again with DFI and uh, see where we go. Members, I haven't heard anyone speak against it, so I'm, I'm taking it that we're all content with the proposal made by Alderman Devaney and seconded by Councillor McGinley. So in that regard, and I see support there from Councillor Boyle on the chat box. Members, we'll move on then from Chairperson's Business and we'll move then to item number six, which is matters arising from the open minutes of the Environment and Regeneration Committee held on Wednesday the 7th of December. Have we... We don't need a problem. We just need... To, is there any matters arising? Member uh, Alderman Hussey, you're first. Uh, thank you. Advantage of being in the Chamber. <laughs> um, Three items, 277, 278 and 279, 277, one said walk. Can I thank uh, Tony and the officers who met with uh, three of us, three of the Derek councillors in Sion Mothers with regard to that particular item yesterday. Uh, very worthwhile meeting. Uh, but uh, the minute I queried the anticipated timeline, and I understand the, the issues that uh, were highlighted by various officers at, at the uh, the uh, which was just yesterday, isn't that right? Yeah, just yesterday. Um, and understand that we're, we're looking at a long-term project with short-term achievement, shall we say, if possible. So within that, uh, and resulting from yesterday, can Tony give us any further insight as to how quickly and how far we'll be able to step along with this particular project? Through Chair, um, I think members and I suppose the officer team reflected on how um, beneficial the, the workshop with members was yesterday. Um, we uh, will pull together the comments of members and we'll bring a report on the committee updating you um, next month in terms of, of actions and timelines um, in relation to that. As, as we said, some we hope to have um, much shorter and some slightly longer. Is there anything else that you want to add, Tony? No. Yeah, I appreciate that, Chair. Uh, the next one was 278, and I presume the answer is the same. <laughs> regard to the wishing well signs. Yeah, um, yes, and again, uh, Chair, as, as officers will have updated, um, we do believe that we may have an opportunity to um, be able to get this um, issue across the line through some funding that we have um, already sourced. We're finalising that and we'll bring a report back to you um, in February and, and hopefully that will be good news for members. Uh, appreciate it, Chair. And my final point, 279, the uh, COVID recovery uh, small settlements program. Um, the the engagement with uh, business owners and I suppose residents who may be impacted directly. Um, I mean, th this is a, a growing issue uh, within some of our smaller settlements, uh, be it Castle Derg, be it Saint Mills, be it Newton Stewart. Uh, is there any indication of how far on? We are with that, and is there a likelihood in the near future uh, that we will see uh, work on the ground or action on the ground with regard to that? Thank you, Chair. 
Uh, sorry, Chair. Thank you, uh, Alderman Hussey. Um, the, uh, as you'll be aware from obviously previous um, reports into committee, um, our design team have been working up the specifications for each of the, the properties that we've identified. And as you'll note, um, we are keen to ensure that we can uh, that we can target all of the properties within each of the, the eight identified settlements. So uh, that information has only just come to us now for uh, final review. And then obviously they will then assign their QEF to put the costs against that. We're hoping that um, that, that exercise should be complete in the next uh, two to three weeks in terms of final costs. Once we have that, and again, just going back to obviously previous commentary, is it, it's important that we can ensure that we have sufficient enough budget to meet the need there. Uh, whilst it's a desire to, uh, to, um, to target all of the properties, that may well change once those costs come in. Um, if we are keen to report back to you, but we think it's probably more appropriate to report back to you when those costs have been assessed and analysed against the budget, which may well be probably sometime in, in March, possibly. Um, but if we can get it sooner, we certainly will. In terms of uh, engagement and work on the ground, in terms of your other uh, question, uh, we are hoping um, to commence the engagement process once we have established the budgetary position because we need to be able to be confident that we can obviously give that assistance to those uh, property owners in terms of work on the ground uh, notwithstanding tendering uh, and all of that that will be required we probably would anticipate that we could be moving in toward maybe late spring early summer in terms of an on-site commencement and that's probably ideal con conditions for uh, the type of works that we're doing namely paint scheme but again, the report will detail all of that as much as we can. Uh, Chair, just a final comment to thank uh, officers for, for the responses. And I, I think what I'm hearing is that um, rather than raising expectations, we will have a realistic picture on all three uh, at our next meeting or, or the one beyond, rather than, as I say, raising those expectations. But it will be yes expectations but realistic expectations thank you chair thank you all of and thank the officers for the response next item i have er 284 councillor martin Riley. martin uh, thanks chair for bringing me in and uh, just in relation to this item on page 12 going on to page 13 of the pack it details uh how last month i stated that we were aware that dfi were in uh uh, the, the process of getting a, a plan to which they had pub indicated that they would publish before the end of the year. Um, but obviously that didn't happen, so we were already facing a delay in relation to it. Uh, the minister, prior to the end of devolution at the end of October, had given a commitment that this would be published before the end of the year. So it is really disappointing to see uh, that it isn't on the agenda today. And through you, Chair, to officers, can I ask why? when we had agreed that we would have uh, a flooding update on our monthly agenda. Uh, it's not on the agenda today uh, and any clarifications officers can bring in relation to communication with DFA uh, in relation to the flooding um, report that was meant to come forward uh, before the end of 2022. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, through you, Chair and members, I apologise. I, I actually had meant to bring this up during the Chair's business. I know I had spoke to the Chair about it um, before the meeting. Um, and yes, uh, we had contacted all of the agencies as we had agreed in order to try to bring the flood update f for them this month. Um, what we did as well, members, is we actually sent on the, the minutes of the previous meeting um, to the agencies so that they would understand, I suppose, the depth of discussion that members have had at the previous committee, and they would understand all of the various areas um, that members required an update on. Um, and we pulled those all out individually so that that would make it um, particularly clear. Now, members, I think really, in terms of this, to be fair to the agencies, um, given the Christmas break um, and the the timeline um, for submission of reports for the committee, um, they really didn't have very much time after the Christmas break. Um, 
However, so really, we we only had one very, um, I suppose, short one line update, um, just to say that the the works in um, in Ballycolman were progressing. Um, however, members, we will take it up again with the agencies following on from today to make sure that uh, we have a, a comprehensive or as a report as we possibly can um, for the next committee. Um, thank you, Chair. You're content, Councillor O'Reilly? Um, yeah, thanks uh, uh, through you, Chair, to Karen for the report. You know, it, it is, I appreciate, uh, in, um, interspersed with the Christmas period, uh, but nonetheless, DFA in the month of October had indicated that they would be bringing this forward before the end of the year. Uh, so I know that residents, many of whom are sitting looking at the snow, wondering about how that will impact on flooding as it begins to thaw, uh, will will want to hear from DFA as soon as they can in relation to uh, what remedial actions the department are planning uh, to prevent a repeat of the instances that have happened uh, last, uh, last summer. Uh, it struck me when listening to all the very valid and true comments in chairperson's business about grit boxes, that that was the exact same conversation that we were having about sandbags uh, last year. Uh, and I think the DFA really need to look at how they respond to adverse weather uh, right across the council district. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Councillor Norris, Declan, uh, you have a matter rising? Uh, thank you, Chair, for bringing me in. Uh, uh, really, I'm, I'm going to echo what uh, Councillor Riley said. I was going to ask the exact same question, why it wasn't on the agenda. Uh, because everybody in the rural area down here is will be watching this today and really worry all the time about the flooding. And like exactly what uh, Martin said, uh, at the minute, like people's watching how the snow's melting out here and how it's going to affect uh, their houses and that, you know. So it's just a worry all the time about the flooding, you know, uh, and what the DFA is really doing about it, you know. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Norris. Members, have we any other uh, matters arising? I don't see anything else. We will move then on, members, to item seven, which is support for the NPA co-power project application, and that as Connor to take it. Um, thanks, Chair. Just to seek members' approval for Council to support and participate in the Interreg uh, Northern Prairie and Arctic Programme um, co-power project as an associate uh, partner. Council have participated in a number of projects over the years and through Secure, Smart Renewal and Smartic, and the objectives which have been to use transnational cooperation to transfer knowledge and implement innovative energy technology technology solutions in public buildings. Unfortunately, since uh, Brexit, Council can no longer participate as a full project partner, but can still benefit as an associate partner. And we're seeking members uh, approval today um, to engage as an associate partner um, through the project uh, with uh, this protected project and that we can continue to learn and bring the knowledge from those projects back to Council and for use within uh, Council facilities. So I say that the uh, recommendation in front of members is to approve the support and participation of Council as an associate partner for the MPA project. Members, have we anyone wish to speak or anyone wish to propose the item? I'll propose it, Chair Alderman De Vene. I'll put a second. Proposed by Alderman De Vene, seconded by Alderman Hussey. Members, I don't see anyone looking to... Sorry, Councillor uh, Kelly, Dan, you wish to come in? Thanks, Chair. I, I'm just, I suppose I have a, a couple of um, queries or, or maybe points of clarification that would be uh, for the officer in terms of the report. And I appreciate he's talking in terms of uh, our public buildings and, and the knowledge from Council. But when we got the presentation some time ago from the virtual power plant um, in Derry, it was in relation to taking a lot of small energy producers and, and effectively managing those assets in a way which is similar to a sort of large central power plant. Uh, and, and I'm not sure, you know, in terms of if it's uh, in relation to negotiating power, you know, in terms of their uh, capitalizing on that on that asset. Um, but given the examples cited in the report are Finland and Iceland, um, where the, the, the models of production are community owned, that's not um, similar to our situation because energy, we're not, you know, as a public body, we're not producing energy, we do produce 
small amounts of energy in some of our buildings in terms of our photovoltaic panels, but we're not an, a, a producer per se, um, unlike in those on those models cited. So, I mean, the, the energy production here is a private corporate ownership. So I'm just wondering in terms of, and I appreciate it's a plan, a concept plan at this stage, but whose interests are being served? Does, it, does this serve the interests of the producer or, or does it um, serve the interests of the, the, the consumer, the end, the end user? Um, and, and the other thing is, well, um, it may be too early, but I, I wonder if we any sort of preliminary indications, because I would have thought in terms of um, green energy production, we are, as a district, as you know, Chair, uh, only too well, we are a huge energy production uh, district, as is Donegal. But a, a significant issue with our production is that um, the, the wind is blowing, it's mostly wind, is blowing 24 hours a day, but we're not using energy 24 hours a day. So the issue around storage, and I would have thought, um, you know, that would need to be a, an integral part of any sort of plan around ensuring sort of the best use of energy, um, both in terms of maximizing the return for the producer, but also in terms of reducing the costs uh, for the consumer. Uh, and I'm just wondering at this stage, have we any sort of preliminary indication that, uh, you know, is there is there any sort of additional infrastructure being required as part of this uh, process? Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Um, Chair, the project is to look at the concepts, but I think the concept is based on community benefit. Um, um, you know, that will look at the uh, experiences of these other communities, as mentioned in terms of Finland, Iceland and so on, and how we can um, transpose those locally. As part of a, a wider discussion, we are looking at um, shared energy uh, production and how we can um, incorporate that into communities. So the old, uh, you know, um, shared energy and shared heating systems that are, are quite common across Europe and, and not so common within Ireland. Um, there are several other projects that the team are working on, looking at how we can um, introduce those um, across the city and district with their partners in Donegal. And there'll be further reports coming to members in, in, in coming months setting out that, those projects and what that will look like. Um, I certainly um, get further information on just um, the outcomes of this particular project and bring that to members um, for uh, further information. Thank you, Chair. And just to add to what Connor's um, outlined there, members, you will be aware, and in particular members who are or have been on um, the, the Northwest Strategic um, Growth Partnership and um, our, our partnership with, with Donegal, we actually have taken forward um, a regional energy strategy. Uh, and again, the, the issues in relation to, I suppose, storage of electricity that's generated renewably um, is certainly a very, very important topic um, and one, you know, that we're working together with colleagues in Donegal to see how we actually take forward the, the strategy in general um, and um, in particular look at opportunities opportunities for, for funding, etc., in relation to some of the, the energy needs of the region, um, very much on with a focus on, I suppose, a just transition and indeed, um, you know, community and uh, consumer benefit in terms of that. So, you know, we, we've had some successes in that, um, but I would imagine, um, given, I suppose, some of the, the, the change in uh, national legislation around um, climate and indeed um, you know, the, the Department for Economies uh, forthcoming energy strategy, etc., that some of these issues will um, receive uh, a lot more attention and indeed um, we, we may well be in a position to uh, take forward um, projects locally that will, will benefit our local consumers. So just to add to that, and as Connor said, we will bring forward further reports to members as, as soon as possible in terms of some of those discussions that we've been having at a more regional basis um, for members' information and, and approval. Uh, Councillor Kelly, are you content? Chair, yeah, I, I very much welcome, you know, the comments from, from Karen and from Connor. I think, you know, I was thinking, you know, we, we don't control either the means of production or of distribution. So I was kind of um, curious to see how how we could sort of um, capitalise on, on any sort of plan, uh, given that circumstance. But it, I can see um, how, you know, it's it's disappointing, um, obviously, from, uh, from a Brexit point of view, that we can't be a full partner in the process. But it's great to see Council being proactive 
uh, in given that circumstance that you know that we're sort of an associate partner that we're still you know keeping in there and trying to keep ahead of the curve and ensuring that um, you know the people in the district who are hard pressed in terms of our our energy consumption needs and the costs associated with them uh, and see uh, you know that that officers are, are at the core face in terms of uh, ensuring we can kind of maximize the best return for for everyone concerned and that's it's really good to hear that uh, and, and I welcome that chair thank you Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Uh, members, that was proposed by Alderman Devaney and seconded by Alderman Hussey. Uh, I think I don't see anyone speaking against, so I'm going to accept that item seven as supported and passed. Members, item eight, sustainable NI, and that's Karen to take it through. Thank you, Chair. Um, and through you, the purpose of this report is to seek approval in relation to continuing our support for sustainable NI. Um, members, you will recall um, over the last number of years, uh, sustainable NI and some of the work that they've done in, in terms of providing expert advice to Council in the development of some of our climate change and, and energy programmes. And indeed, members in your report, it outlines a lot of the other work that sustainable NI um, does in coordinating in this space um, and in, in I suppose supporting in, uh, central local government and indeed businesses and communities in terms of um, sustainability and climate change. Um, members, we as officers do believe that um, this this particular organisation is is very worthwhile. They add an awful lot of value um, and indeed as a council we have supported them over the, the last number of years. Um, we have received a request from them for continued financial um, support um, and indeed uh, we would uh, welcome um, members' uh, endorsement in terms of approving uh, financial support from them for from our existing budgets in, in the region of £6,000. I'm happy to take any comments that members have. Anyone wish to pass comment, members? Or if I... Sorry, Councillor McGinley, first, Emma. Sure, I'm Aga, Chair, and I'll, I'll be um, brief on it. Um, you know, as, as, as it's already recognised, you know, climate change is one of the biggest, it's probably the single biggest challenge that's facing our generation globally. And given the Council's position and support of becoming more sustainable, we would be in support of renewing the membership. However, given the Council's current financial position and the work that members put on at the Financial Working Group to ensure that the Council is getting value for money, um, you know, in the report in point 3.7, it's that sustainable NI's knowledge, experience, lobbying and advice um, has been invaluable to Council. I'm wondering, can Council officers give a bit more information on it and why they feel that this recommendation is the support? That, that it's value for money um, for the council, just just so that we've got a clarity for us, but we would be in support and I'm happy to propose a recommendation um, that's within the report for my good chair. Yeah, um, through you, Chair, members, um, it, as it's outlined in Section 3 of your report, um, Sustainable NI has, um, is, is a very active uh, player, um, not only in um, supporting Council in terms of, of a lot of the, the work we're trying to take forward and leading on on climate change um, and energy uh, management, etc., um, but also the, the support um, that uh, the, the organisation um, gives to our own particular officers within council um, the knowledge and experience that they bring um, and indeed um, the facilitation around um, the engagement with uh, central government both um, MLAs um, and indeed uh, the um, you know the, the the government officials at central government. Uh, they they have been key over the years um, in terms of that knowledge, experience, um, etc., in being able to um, move us along the stage now where we have got um, you know obviously uh, the climate bill. We've also got um, an energy strategy. Um, action plans and um, targets, etc., for uh, emissions reductions, etc. And we do believe that um, as we move forward over the next year, we will need that knowledge and experience and um, in moving to a stage where, you know, the climate um, 
legislation it starts to become fully enacted and enabled and we um, then see potentially uh, targets and, and actions both for the central government departments but also for other public bodies including council um, so certainly you know um, we as officers do recognize the work that the team do it's a very very small team and it is um you know whilst it's you know six thousand pounds not um an insignificant uh, amount of of funding we do believe that it is value for money because for the amount of engagement and support that we get throughout the year um certainly it's very beneficial um but members i do understand um Council's financial position, and again, members, uh, this uh, budget potentially um, can be taken from existing budgets for this year, um, and we can indeed um, review um, the position moving forward into the, the new financial year, um, as, uh, as, as if members wish us to do so. Thank you, Councillor McGinley. Are you still content with the response and still content to propose the item? Uh, Chair, I would be. Thank you for that, Karen. I appreciate the, the clarity on it. And as I say, I'm still happy to propose the recommendation within the report for my year. See that it's been seconded by Councillor O'Neill and supported by Councillor Boyle. Uh, members, I don't see anyone wish, anyone further wishing to speak. Or sorry, Councillor Kelly, Dan. Yeah, just further to, to Councillor McGinley's comment and, and the response to it, Chair. I know uh, from what Karen has said that there's a lot of the work that's being done. Uh, and delivered in terms of the strategic direction for, for sustainable energy and it's very much welcome and I, and I do welcome the work that Sustainable and I do uh, and their role um, in helping us as a council but I'm just wondering uh, one of the most disappointing things for me over recent times has been you know learning that um, the price of renewable energy uh, is indexed linked to the price of oil so um, we, we are, as an energy producing area um, we, we were aware, particularly through members of the planning committee, of you know that almost fifty percent of the energy in the north comes from renewable sources. But the people on the street didn't see any appreciable um, impact of that uh, over the last energy crisis or the current energy crisis, um, because the price of the renewable energy rocketed at the same price as oil and gas. And I'm just wondering, you know, in terms of our response now and going forward with sustainable NI. Um, if we can, you know, mention this fact to them and press upon them the need to do some work uh, with perhaps the energy regulator and government uh, centrally uh, to ensure that uh, you know energy uh, from green uh, sources is decoupled uh, from uh, oil and gas in terms of their pricing, uh, so that people are will warm more towards uh, renewable energies because if they're not seeing a difference in terms of cost. There's there's no there's no incentive really for people to kind of jump uh, towards renewable energies. Why would you? Um, because it's going to cost the same at the end of the day. So I think that's just something in terms of our next steps that I would be keen to see council uh, press forward uh, in terms of our association with sustainable NI. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, through you, Chair, certainly more than happy to, to follow up on that. Um, Councillor Kelly, um, certainly, you know, again, uh, it's it's a it's an interesting um, situation, I suppose, um, and more than happy to take members' views on board and, and follow that up accordingly. Councillor O'Neill and then Alderman Hussey, Maeve. Uh, thanks, Chair. I suppose in, in uh, following on from uh, Councillor Kelly's comments, um, I think I'm pretty sure um, Sustainable NI in convening the All Party Group on Climate Action um, have invited the Department for Economy to present on the energy strategy a number of times, and every single time um, the Department of Economy have uh, pulled out of that presentation at the very last minute. Um, so I know that I think they are trying to, um, you know, try and push forward on the energy strategy and ask the key questions, um, and and bring you know bring that platform for councillors and for MLAs. Um, but um, I think that, like a lot of the problem lies with the uh, department for economy. Um, I'm almost certain uh, when it comes to the energy strategy, as they're as far as I'm aware. And correct me if I'm wrong. There's no uh, government subsidies or incentives to um, 
develop renewable energy uh, for the north, um, or to even look at uh, community-owned energy energy um, uh, models. Uh, so we're we're behind the times and um, kind of at a, at a stalemate when it comes to actually developing, you know, uh, effective renewable energy uh, sources. Thanks. Jose, thank you, Councillor Romney. Uh, thank you, Chair. And uh, just to, to completely endorse and support uh, Councillor Kelly's remarks, uh, I think we can all understand variations in price uh, on on those fuel sources that are dealt with through the commodity markets. But uh, for the love of me uh, uh, and the company that my business operates through is a well-known company with regard to um, turbines. And which they can understand that the capital costs within that uh, can uh, go up uh, within, again, commodity markets with regard to the materials that they're using, etc. For the love of me, I cannot understand how the price of wind has gone up. Uh, I'm not aware of it. You know, so completely endorse and support Councillor Kelly and welcome the officer's response that we may be trying to seek an answer, but uh, the big companies, uh, they're creaming a wee bit on this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Uh, and members, with that, with proposed by Councillor McGinley and seconded by Councillor O'Neill, I think we're content with item eight uh, in regards to sustainable NI. Members, the next items uh, I will go through in, in order here are, are only matters for information, and that is item nine is the building control applications. Alderman Hussey. Uh, it's just an observation within that particular uh, agenda item. And it's the income generated, and I think you know. I think we cannot ignore those figures there. Uh, in an eight-month period, uh, council building control department uh, generates generated uh, seven hundred and four uh, thousand pounds. Extrapolate that up to a year, and you're looking at a million quid coming into this council through building control. And similarly, uh, if you extrapolate up the uh, the received applications and construction value. You're, you're looking at two hundred million pounds of of growth within our area, um, and I wonder would it be possible to have a look at figures going back a couple of years, so that we can see uh, what progression or lack of progression is occurring within uh, our, our economy via build, should it be commercial build, should it be uh, private house build, should it be whatever. Uh, but it's certainly a reflection uh, that would be useful for Council to know how we're progressing going forward. And of course, all of those applications, when they uh, get their occupants, etc., that's more rich to Council. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Through you, Chair Members, we're more than happy to bring a, a, a report and I suppose show in the last number of years. There's a couple of factors more recently. Um, you know, the the building control fees had changed sort of um, June time and we did have a number of applications came in at that stage. Um, there are sometimes in, in particular years um, uh, some uh, particular applications that come in that actually have quite high fees due to the nature of them. For example, major um, capital construction on, on the hospital um, at Alton Galvin, for example. Um, so what we can do is is bring forward um, a report that, that explains a little bit of that information. But certainly, um, you know, the income generated and the construction value, we've been now um, recording that and, and reporting it to members for the last, I think it's five or six years now, and I do think it is a very good um, indication, as, as members have mentioned, in terms of, uh, you know, an indicator of development in the area, and it's certainly very positive um, to see, um, and certainly we're more than happy to bring a more comprehensive report outline and all of those things, um, and providing, I suppose, a few caveats where uh, necessary in terms of making sure that the, the information is not misleading. Thank you. Thank you, members. That's item, um, sorry, item nine on the building control, and we'll have a response back. Uh, item 10, proposed disabled parking base, Alderman Hussey. 
Uh, Chair, it's not with regard to the actual proposals. Uh, it's regard uh, to an issue that you yourself are aware of. And could a request go to the department to examine the current location of disabled bays in the Castle Derrick Town Centre area? Uh, it would be my opinion that uh, circumstances have changed within the town centre uh, to the degree that perhaps there are bays located where they're not needed and there are other areas where they are needed. So if, uh, if council, or sorry, if the department could take a look at the current locations and bring us back some perhaps recommendations. Thank you, Chair. I'd make that a proposal. That's kind of, you're happy enough with that proposal? I can, uh, I'll, I'll second it. I don't like seconding things from the Chair, but I, if you're content, I know the one in particular that we're, that we're aware of that, we, that needs to be resolved. I think that's all for item 10. Nobody else was on item 10, no. Uh, member, item 11 is the award for ORCS um, funding to Council Consortium for these EV chargeable update. No one, that was item 12. It is, sorry, I just see that there on the, on the chat, Councillor Riley. Um, I do know, maybe I'm wrong on that report. Is there anything, for, any of those charging points in Newton Stewart? I wasn't just sure in each end of it, just see there, see the wee list, or is there, maybe there? There's a C point in Newton Street, or others oh, All right, 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 sorry. Uh, Councillor Riley, you're on item 12. Thank you, Chair, on item 11, just to thank officers for the report and the work that's done on this. As, uh, when this was initially presented to committee, uh, everyone spoke about how well our council had done in, a, in, in securing this money, not just for our council area, but for the other council areas across Northern Ireland. So it's good to see it progressing and, and hopefully the second phase will, will be equally successful. And just to thank officers for bearing in mind uh, what I had said to them in relation to locations. Uh, I know there's a few of the locations in the Waterside DEA, so I appreciate the effort that's gone into the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Nate Mora, Alderman Devaney, you wish to come in on item 11 also? No? no sorry, no. Look, sorry, 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 Alderman Devaney. I looked at that wrong. I read it was Martin Riley, it's Morris Devaney. Sorry about that. I don't know who's more offended there. Um, let me see. Item, that was item, Alderman Hussey on item 11. Yeah, just a, a quick one. These, I'm assuming, are additional to what exa already exists within the area. Chair, the existing charge points are to be upgraded as part of a separate scheme. So the ones that uh, the Chair referred to in uh, Newton Stewart will be upgraded as part of that. There's a separate application to go in there to look for additional charge points as part of a similar type scheme. And then there's another project moving forward in terms of faster charge points. And that's looking to put in um, up to uh, 50 kV charge points in a number of locations across the city and district as well. Uh, very welcome and thank you, Chair. Right, members, I think that's all for item 11. Item 12, I have Councillor Duffy, uh, first speaker. Gourmet Yoga Chair, uh, from myself, just a comment followed by hopefully a motion. So Sinn Féin and I would like to pay, pay our respects to the tireless efforts of the campaigners, particularly the late, the late, the late Joe Ferguson, who thought tirelessly to bring them a boy contamination to the public's attention. Joe passed away in 2016, but despite Joe's passing, Joe's legacy lives on. Through audio recordings, he made during his final hours, which they will be featured on a BBC4 uh, podcast documentary series releasing this month. My thoughts and condolences go out to the family of Joe during this difficult time. It has been nearly a decade since the discovery of the Maboy dump contamination, and it will remain a press and issue for many, including this council and Sinn Féin as a party. It is imperative that those responsible take immediate action to rectify this problem and bring closure to the affected communities of Fulham. Furthermore, I would like to ask members, would it be useful if we as a council write to Water NA and request that they facilitate a delegation to visit the water treatment facility at Carmoni? to learn more about how the drinking water is protected, how testing is carried out uh, to protect the public from the potential leakage from a boy. Good morning, Chair. 
Thank you for your comments, uh, Councillor Duffy. Uh, Councillor uh, Norris, can I ask there, are you on item 12 or have you a different item? You are on item 12 here. Uh, Councillor Norris, I'll just, I'll just come back to you because Councillor O'Neill is just in front of you, but I just wanted to clarify in case I had missed you on one of the previous items, but I'll bring you in now on item 12 just after Councillor O'Neill. So, Maeve, you're next on item 12. Uh, thanks, Chair. I'm happy to uh, second that proposal um, that was just made there. Um, if required, I don't know if it needs to go up in the chat box or or uh, or what. Uh, but yeah, just to um, echo the previous speaker, um, I think you know my um, boy is going to be in the spotlight. Um, you know, nationally now or across these islands. Uh, anyway, um, coming uh, this coming Monday. Um, um, as as was previously said, this uh, podcast called Buried, uh, it's going to be on BBC Radio 4 uh, at one forty five, And that's just after the World at One uh, programme, which has listened, has an audience of over 3 million people. Um, so, you know, my boy, like there, he's going to be making uh, the headlines on my boy again, but not for something uh, that we're proud of, but something that it's really, really important to continue to highlight as, you know, the my boy problem has uh, still not been remediated, even though, um, you know, uh, work um, is, is continuing on this. Um, and I think, um, you know, one episode of this podcast is completely dedicated to the community activism around my boy, uh, which has been essential to actually get us as far as we as we are. Um, and, you know, I think a, a special, um, just a special uh, accommodation to the gathering um, environmental group who have been instrumental in helping uh, make the, the podcast series. Um, and we're really doing it, owe a, a debt to, to these committed activists. Um, I just, uh, so as, as well as just kind of highlighting the Buried podcast, um, I also wanted to highlight just there was a recently published a uh, summary by the ombudsman there um, of an investigation that it completed in 2017 into the department's mishandling of Kempsey sand and gravels extractions at Maboy. Um, I will I'll send round this um, uh, summary document uh, to all councillors and, and officers as well. But just, um, you know, it's no surprise that the findings within the ombudsman report are completely damning um, with the neglectful practices and conducts exposed uh, within the DOE in relation to environmental impact assessments. Um, and I think, you know, uh, you know, this report was published in 2017, but it took five and a half years to complete. Um, and, you know, the policy at that time uh, from the Ombudsman that these reports weren't actually publicly released. And I think it's a shame because there could have been a lot of learnings around the environmental impact assessments <clears throat> had this report actually been, uh, been made public. And I think, um, you know, with regards to environmental impact assessments and learnings, you know, we can see that the EFI are continuing to gauge in the same neglectful approach to these EIAs in respect of Loch May, um, so which suggests that lessons haven't been learned. Um, but I suppose, you know, just given that, you know, council now have planning powers, um, I, I just want to ask the question, have we as a council been made aware of uh, the Ombudsman report in terms of our own learning uh, around environmental impact uh, regulation uh, and the application of it. I know this might be a better question for uh, planning, really, uh, but obviously it concerns the Environment and Regeneration uh, Directorate. Uh, thank you. Yeah, through Chair, members um, would really welcome um, Councillor O'Neill sending um, the information and I'm not, I, I don't know exactly which one it is. I know we have been made aware of, of some um, documents, but until I actually see it, I don't know if we are aware of it as yet. Um, if the officer team um, haven't been, then certainly, um, as as usual, we will um, review it and, and look at the learning for our own um, organisation as well. But thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, next on my list here is Councillor Norris. Thank you, Chair, for bringing me in. Uh, I was going to speak on item 11 as well, but I'll speak on item 12 first. Uh, I fully support Councillor Duffy's motion. Uh, I knew the, Ferg I know the Ferguson family really well, as, uh, as uh, Councillor Duffy said, so I would show me respect to them. Uh, this is a big issue again, similar to the the flooding issue is a very personal issue to the local people. Uh, reading the report, you can see that you know, 
nobody really knows how much is buried there. It's either 600,000 or a million 600,000 tons of waste. It's just really worrying to the local people, you know, and as being a local person, we would like it sorted out uh, sooner than later. It's going on too long, in uh, my opinion. Uh, the talk on item 11, Chair, uh, it was just really around the the charging points in the town. Uh, a member of public stopped me and they had said that there was only three charging points working out of seven. Uh, and he has electric car. I do not have an electric car, but uh, he he was really worried about this, that every time you go to a charging point, he also mentioned that in the Bishop Street car park, if you plugged into that, when the car park closed, the charging point shut down when the when the actual car park closed. Uh, I wasn't able to answer the, any of the questions, and I'll just put that to the officers. Thank you, Chair. Yep, Chair, the charging points in, in the city are operated by ESB and Council of No Direct Input. Um, and to those, um, the locations were agreed, um, certainly the locations within Car Park were agreed um, before the transfer of car parks to Council. Uh, ESB are in the process of upgrading um, all of those charge points um, and are in discussion at the moment with the Council on um, licenses and so on to do so. But I know that the plan is to upgrade them all, subject to um, tying down some of the issues around ownership. As you know, the car parks transferred. There's some legal issues around that that have to be bottomed out. Um, I can certainly um, have raised the issue with the Bishop Street car park. That shouldn't happen. As I say, um, the, the power supplies should be isolated and, and completely separate from any infrastructure that Council manages in there. But I know, as I said, that the plan is to upgrade all of those chargers at present and to locate additional charge points um, across the city through a number of different schemes. Thank you, Connor. Uh, the last speaker I have on the Mumbai update is Alderman Hussey. Derek? Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, thanks for, for the proposal. It makes sense. Um, I think we all know that hopefully we're coming to the end of the, the court issues around this particular uh, situation uh, that people find themselves in. And of course, it's a serious situation for those in the immediate vicinity of that particular site. Um, I do have to say, however, Chair, that uh, I, I attend... Now, don't ask me how I ended up on it, <laughs> but, but I attend uh, the uh, voiced stakeholder group meetings. Don't ask me how I got there, but I do. I do. And all councillors are supposed to be uh, available, you know, or welcome along to that. And I do have to say that I find it disappointing at times, uh, the council, council representation. And just to remind all councillors that the next meeting of that particular group is on the 7th of February at 2.30 in the Eglinton Community Centre. And I hope that councillors will avail of the opportunity to go along to that. Uh, it's uh, DERA. Uh, project. It, it's the Maboy Remediation Project. Remediations Options Appraisal will take place on the 7th of February. So can I encourage folk to get along to that? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Alderman Hussey. Members, we have the proposal uh, put on the jump box there, and I think we have all had opportunity to see it or read it out here. Sorry, members. Uh, proposed by uh, Councillor Duffy and seconded by Councillor O'Neill that the Council write to uh, Water NI requesting that they facilitate a delegation of councillors to the water treatment plant at Cairn Money. Uh, the purpose of this delegation is to provide councillors with the opportunity to learn more about the process of protecting our water from potential leakage from a boy and to the River Fahan. That's proposed by Councillor Duffy, seconded by uh, Councillor O'Neill. And I don't see anyone speaking against it. So, members, I think we're content with that item. And thank you, members. All right. Next item I have as item 13 as the proposed asphalt uh, plant at Burnfoot. And the first speaker I have is Councillor McGinley, followed by Councillor O'Neill. So, Emma. Now, my good chair, and I just wanted to highlight this. Um, we would fully welcome the decision by Anne Floor Planella to refuse the permission for the proposed asphalt plant and burn foot. And that's despite the board's refusal to um, take on board comments that were made by this committee and this council um, following the presentation by the South and Ashwin against Asphalt Group. Um, but we are delighted that the residents' concerns have been taken on board and that the proposed um, 
actual plant has been refused planting permission, but it was just to, to, to note that um, and have it on record. Go my good chair. Thank you, Councillor McGinley. Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thanks, Chair. Yeah, it's just to, again, um, to say well done to the local community for their excellent campaign um, and organisation and objecting to this asphalt plant. Um, you know, it was it was an excellent victory uh, for that campaign, uh, which is, you know, which will bring benefit um, to the local community, but also it's a transboundary issue, which um, Board Pronona did not uh, take into consideration. Um, and, you know, so I think it's also good for uh, residents uh, in our council district as well that this asphalt plant is not going ahead. And, you know, I think this factory should give strength um, and confidence to other, um, you know, environmental campaigns uh, that, like, you know, that uh, working together and campaigning can actually uh, make a difference and uh, and win and protect um, uh, people's local uh, ecosystems, um, which in turn helps to protect the health and the well-being of, of, of local people themselves. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Next item, members. Oh, sorry, Alderman Hussey. Just, just very briefly, also, also to welcome the uh, letter from the Southern Planning uh, Organisation. I, I can't pronounce that word, so I don't intend. Um, but just to assure uh, members that the the irk of this committee at the initial response uh, went to our request was passed on through the Northwest Regional uh, Development Group. Uh, as Karen knows, uh, they were well let know. So it's welcome that perhaps somebody somewhere along the line has taken note uh, and acted on this. But as, as others have said, it's a very, very welcome letter from the department. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hussey. Next item, members, is item number 14, and that is a reusable sanitary scheme. And the first speaker I have is Councillor McGinley. Emma. Where am I, good chair? And I, again, um, I think this is a, a, a project and a scheme that highlights previous comments that have been made on around the importance of sustainability and the environmental impact of, of how we live our life. Um, on top of that, I think it, it's also really important to note that this scheme itself will sort of start to break down um, the, the stigma that, that stands on and around periods and period products um, and even reusable ones um, that are available on the market. I think it's great to see that this council's leading. I know um, Councillor Sandra Duffy, um, the mayor, um, have brought motions forward in relation to this, as had others. Um, and I think it's really, really important work that we're, we're working together um, to reduce that stigma and to encourage the use of um, reusable sanitary products. Um, so it's just to denote that. And as I say, we're just delighted that the council is, is, is taking the lead on this project. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGinley. Uh, Councillor Ferguson, Rachel. Thank you, Chair. And, and similar as Councillor McGinley, just want to welcome the report. I think it is a... a was a fantastic motion that we all spoke in, in support of, and uh, I think it just even the background and the level of detail within this report that shows the the difference that could be made by using reusable sanitary towels and and uh, products is is a huge difference. My only question, Chair, and, I, and I'm not sure whether it be answered. I know note within the report that there is a, a need or a hope that we could possibly get around about five thousand pounds, but I also note that Belfast City Council had said that they had significant levels of demand where 2,750 orders were made in less than 24 hours, but that £5,000 could equate only to around about 800 pairs of uh, pants within the budget. So I'm wondering whether council officers are hoping to have a, a, a much bigger pot to use, but I, I think I'll welcome anything that kind of raises awareness, even having this report along with the Hay Gairns catalogue, I think it's going to raise the profile of reuse and plant-based sanitary products, which is must be welcomed and, and well done. Thank you, Chair. Through you, Chair, certainly um, on the budget, um, yes, we will uh, seek to, um, I suppose, um, 
try and uh, maximise the funding opportunities. We've had discussions about potential funding opportunities for this for the, the year ahead. And um, I suppose we're, we're fairly confident that we should be able to seek um, funding. Um, there's a, a number of possible sources. So certainly we'll be our members' comments and on uh, on board um, in particular uh, in relation to try and make sure that, that um, any funding would be available to as many people as possible moving forward. Thank you, Karen. Uh, the last speaker on this item is Councillor O'Neill. Maeve. Uh, thanks, Chair. And um, it's great to see uh, this uh, report coming. Um, um, after it was myself that had proposed the original motion um, for reasonable sanitary products, um, and I know that there's real passion within Council, uh, you know, to make this to make this happen. Um, and yeah, I think the report is is excellent in in terms of the level of detail. Um, and I think it's excellent that uh, you know that we've uh, liaised with colleagues um, in Belfast City Council uh, who you know trialled a, a similar scheme, and there's definitely lessons to be learned from that. I think particularly in terms of uh, their you know their scheme was free um, products, and I know that officers have been uh, looking at the model um, of. Uh, a, re a reduced um, cost uh, for reusable products, given you know the it is a, a larger upfront cost, uh, you know, for these products. Um, I, th I think part of the motion, uh, the original motion, was working with the NIRN, the Northern Ireland uh, Reuse Network. Uh, you know, they are an excellent network of uh, uh, different organisations and, and statutory uh, and community and voluntary sector organisations who are working to um particularly progress the zero waste circular economy um and you know so they they would be very much on point particularly when it comes to funding applications and i know they have a passion and energy uh for for this um this uh, scheme as well um and i'm aware that the uh, council officers met with nirn uh once uh with regards to this but i, I think it's important kind of as we develop this this scheme, like obviously, hey, Belfast City Council used Hey Girls, and you know, and they're excellent um, in terms of the product that they've produced. Um, but um, I know that the fashion design and textile hub locally uh, are interested in trying to develop um, this type of product, um, uh, but not not in the in maybe the the numbers that Hey Girls can do, but maybe in a percentage to try to develop local enterprise. So I suppose what I'm saying in a roundabout way um, is. Uh, the importance of uh, collaborating with NIRN, who have uh, local um, community partners such as the uh, Fashion Design and Textile Hub, and, and, and developing this, so it's a really successful scheme, um, uh, which you know, which is you know, community, uh, which is has the community centrally involved uh, to uh, ensure success. Um, so, I like uh, just do officers plan to. Uh, further collaborate uh, with NIRN and others to to develop this and to develop funding opportunities for this, or do officers see this as a thing the council uh, will do with uh, procuring from from Hay Gears alone? Um, and I suppose in in relation to the success of this, obviously any intervention around um, waste reduction and kind of change in behaviours. Um, like thirty percent of that as education, and there's there's really good opportunities to actually you know work um, you know in schools and even you know making your own uh, uh, sanitary pad uh, through uh, uh, old materials, um, uh, which is a great education intervention. Um, and you know again, community partners might be. Um, might be great in in terms of delivering that education and that behaviour change uh, strand uh, again to ensure the success of the scheme. So sorry, big uh, it was maybe a lot of chatting there, but just kind of how do you council uh, uh, foresee progressing uh, the scheme? Thanks. 
Yeah, um, I think through you, Chair, there's a, a couple of elements there. Um, firstly, in terms of, I suppose, engagement um, with, with industry and, and looking to actually to see how we can support local, um, local, I suppose, social enterprise and, and, and enterprise. Um, our, our colleagues in, in business and culture, in uh, particular the head of business, um, is actually um, considering that issue and um, hopefully they have the expertise and knowledge within the, the team to be able to take that aspect of the notice of motion forward and that's been allocated to them so we'll certainly um, make them aware of members comments today um, certainly as as we know um, you know we will seek to uh, Try and draw down funding in order to, uh, I suppose, enable us to, to offer discounted products locally, um, depending on, on what products are available. Again, at that time, we, we will be able to, to consider that. Um, and certainly what we, we plan to do following on from members' endorsement today is to start that conversation, I suppose, around um, uh, community knowledge and um, trying to, to market and uh, communicate the, the message to local residents who may well uh, be interested in, in actually taking this forward themselves in their own um, personal choices and, and their own um, homes and, and lives. So certainly that's something that we've given some thought to. Um, so uh, we will uh, work to, to take that forward um, in terms of a media campaign over uh, the coming days and weeks. Um, and certainly we'll welcome members uh, support and endorsement in terms of that. Um, and we'll bring, as we said, further reports to members in, in due course in terms of that. Thank you. Thank you, members, and thank Karen for her response. Members, I'm looking for a proposal to go into confidential. Proposed by Alderman Hussey, a seconder, members? Yeah, I'll second. second. Thank you, Councillor McGinley, supported Councillor Duffy. Uh, we'll wait now for to be tired.